So Acts chapter 21. Uh, so today we are beginning a second, uh, actually a third phase. Which closes on to what we call Paul's third missionary journey. We started this exposition. Last year in August. And it was August this year when we finished a year in this book. We found our good Lord was enabled us to move in all these chapters and learning a number of different things. But here is where now we get into a lot of things that are indeed very much touching and with a lot of uh, actually sympathy that you and I that have gone through the book we can again actually consider on the side of Paul the Apostle. Uh, a number of things that he went through. And now looking in chapter 21. We see a number of different things that actually point to the end of his life. That many other chapters we have covered. This is a man. That traveled to different nations. Different gentle nations. Taking the gospel, reaching to different places, but now that had now come to an end. So now he was going to make his final journey in Jerusalem. He also prepares to go to Rome where he would die. But with a number of things that were indicating that if, if possible, he had not to go to Jerusalem. So let us look at uh, the first nine verses. Considering Paul's journey to Caesarea. Paul's journey to, uh, to Caesarea. So I want to read for us the first nine verses. And we draw out of them what I want us to understand. And then we also see what we can actually apply. Uh, the Bible says and when he had departed from them he set sail and we came by straight by a straight course to course and the next day to Rhodes and from there to Patara having found a ship crossing to Phoenicia we went aboard and set sail when we had come in sight of Cyprus leaving it on the left side we sailed to Syria and landed at Tyra for there the ship was to unload its cargo and having sought out the disciples we stayed there for seven days and through the spirit they were telling Paul not to go on to Jerusalem when our days there were ended we departed and went on our journey and they all with wives and children accompanied us until we were outside the city kneeling down on the beach we prayed and said farewell to one another then we went on we went on board the sh we went on on, the, on board the ship and they returned home when we had finished the voyage from Tyra we arrived at Potolemes and we greeted the brothers and stayed with them for one day on the next day we departed and came to Caesarea 
Sira. And we entered into the house of Philip. She was doing art for Philip. The evangelist. Ma era ile kujim. Who was one of the seven. Ma roti kimjo abera. And stayed with him. Ubero kere. And he had four unmarried daughters. Ubero kero tina ni anope ni nyomoge. Who prophesied. Ma to the navy. So now these are the verses. Ma na etching. That I want us to carefully exegete. Ma amir ni kwa kwanyo ge ye. And then expose the truth that is in these verses. You don't want your dramatic come So we may learn something to apply. We are often the girl more around it. The thing that we need to consider here is the start of this journey. Let us begin it by looking at chapter 20. Using verse 36 to connect with what we do have in chapter 21. So follow with me in your Bibles. In Acts 20 verse 36 And when he had said these things he knelt down and prayed with them. The key thing about this that this was Paul's actual style of prayer. He always had his prayers on his knees as a sign of humbleness as a sign of adoration to God as a sign of saying his supplication to God. And it's one thing that if you are able to do, do it. But what is very important, before you kneel down, you need to make sure that your heart is already also bowing down before God. There are people who kneel down but their hearts are not kneeling down before God. So God is not moved by any of those tiles by the condition of your heart. So that is seven. And there was much weeping on the part of all. These are leaders at Miletus. They cried after having had a number of things from him. They all embraced him and kissed him. And being sorrowful most of all because of the word he had spoken that they would not see his face again. They accompanied him to the ship. These are leaders. So now verses, chapter 21 just picks up from chapter 20. That's why 21 starts like this. And when we had parted from them, they had departed from the leaders that were meeting with Paul at Miletus. And the other thing that is very important that we talked about is the famous we that this is Dr. Luke including himself in the narrative showing that when they parted away from the leaders that were meeting with Paul at Miletus. He was also together with Paul and the rest of the travel companions. One other thing that is very interesting is that we set sail and came by a straight coast to coast. Now coast was an island actually in the Mediterranean Sea. The same is to do with this other place that is known as Rhodes. And then from there, they came to Patara. These are good names that you can actually give to people who are looking for names. So the thing is, they also happen to reach Patara. Now Patara is a key place. From there, we see a change of different things. The apostle and the rest of they that had traveled with him, they leave a small ship and they connect to the big vessel that had the ability of crossing an open sea. That's why you see in verses 2. It says, having found a ship crossing to Phoenicia so they changed from one ship to another that was connecting to, to Phoenicia. And then we went 
aboard she was met and set a sail chidongwa chawa a furniture is very important in our learning ponikia pier tech to twale kwa considering acts 11 kawa nea na tipalo kwa na chora par che just look there kangone rukono this is one of the places ina yo beru kabero that we need to be sure about makawa mero beru gimorie that had received the gospel mauno kwa na mabe in the early days of of police ministry kar machon mano polo cha doctor jeke this is what we see ya inga mwana ya chapter 11 and the verse is 19 chenge apa abuya bo bible says bible watch it. now those man joni who were scattered man no get cat wala because of the persecution piano ne pia yela yela that arose over stephan no i come stephan traveled as far as phoenicia ke war muke ya chere phoenicia are you getting that we were scattered from jerusalem arma ke mo akel o jerusalem they took the gospel to those places ke kwano ke twalo ke arma be ka bere go so phoenicia phoenicia is one of the places and i obey kabero that had received the gospel mau no kwa na mabe as well as cyprus kare wa cyprus that is not enough the better in peru chapter 15 also concretizes on the same point a parabit me mere and lo achele anoni ah the book of acts chapter 15 this parabit kwa na chora parabit looking at verse 3 chenga da when a paul and barnabas had to travel back to jerusalem ma paul gani barba mer ke dok chen jerusalem to give their report wa kimi adugine on to the judea isas i come Joma gelo akewa how they were forcing so many Christians in the church of Antioch Ken mano gitiga dilo Christa ma Paul kanita me Antiochia to be to be actually circumcised mer gelege Look at verse 3. Nan chenga da of Acts 15. Tichala kwa par. Verse 3. Chenga da. So being set on their way. Kar maron ki twal ki yo. By the church. Maka nita twal ki. Speaking of Paul and Barnabas. Lo kon Paul ka chenga ki ba. They passed. Ge karo. Through both Phoenicia. E ka ber me Phoenicia and Samaria. Ge Samaria. Describing in detail. Gitia terne yo matut. The conversion of the Gentiles. La ka pa lo rock and brought a great joy to all the brothers. Kelo yom chun ma did but good mega so fornicia Ponikia was already reached with the gospel. So when you see Paul just passing, we know him. He doesn't just pass a place. By the time you see him passing, he knows that that place is covered. Then the Bible says in verse 3, Bible why chenga there of Acts 21. And when we had come in the sight of Cyprus. So as they were on the water, Before them mano nyimge was Cyprus no lo Cyprus and it was on their left geno titunga cham that is according to the narrative of the doctor mano be kid man doctor who was supposed to be a good historian and be berkin jo chel mo chel lok man something that makes one a good historian naramo we in bed la chol lok ma be is knowing ngeo what you should include in your story gin mo mere carry kom lok ni and what you should leave out in your story gin mere we are pay chol so this is that's why we said that doctor lok was indeed a good historian Mi wa daktar lo beru ngara chen mo cho cho ma be good physician ge bere la daktar ma be bible says ba wa chi and we sailed to syria chi wa kwang wa chere syria and landed at tyra chi wa chere wa chunge tara there is a lot of things here for us to consider chi je ma paul kinyo me wa nero i look at verses 4 nan chenga ngwe having sought out disciples kar ma no wa yenye lo kwana we stayed there seven days wa beru kono ni na beru now seven days had a lot of things that were happening ani na beru tik je ma paul ma in them again that it is at tyra ne obel tyra where paul kam kinya e paul is first actually told kam ak kwa wache by the tyrenian disciples joma nyolo ko christo mak ti tyra through the spirit ni wo ke twin that he never had to go to jerusalem ne mer en po che jerusalem this actually is what we call ina e gimo wan wan woni the prophecy of trouble ah ne bi me what what we mean by prophecy of trouble in mo woni ne mano What it is a kind of prophecy that highlighted the dangers and the difficulties that were awaiting for Paul and the thing that is very clear the Tyrrhenian disciples were not saying something new are we following they were saying that which Paul knew of already Let us roll back. We do function by considering chapter 20. Mina na chora pia rea. And the verse is 22. Chenge pia rea rea. And listen to what the apostle say. We know mara kwa no wayo. Say. Watch it. Now behold. Then 
I am going to Jerusalem. Constrained by the Spirit. Constrained by the Spirit. Not knowing what will happen to me there. Except the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. So for the Spirit of the Lord to make a concretized version for Paul that he wasn't deceived at any moment. He uses the Tyrrhenian disciples to speak of the same dangers. But now the thing for us also to understand is that could we say that this word the Tyrrhenian disciples spoke by the Spirit was it against that which Paul had to do? The thing for us to settle is very simple. This prophecy was mixed with two main things. The trouble what? and actually the caution for safety. They were not deterring him from doing what he had to do. But they were speaking to him what was shown to them. But as men being used of the spirit, they also have their mixed emotions flowing in. Because of the love they had for Paul, they tried to dissuade him from going to Jerusalem. But the thing here that is also very out is that when you read in verses 5 the Bible says when Paul this is actually Paul when our days there were ended yes he had heard everything that they had said but the man was so very much connected to the assignment and the thing you see is Paul actually being so very much moved oh, by duty. I don't teach. In other words, duty was screaming more louder to him than all the warnings. The warnings were very many. We have first of all seen this. They love him. They care for him. And they say, man, they are known to go to Jerusalem. But because this gentleman from the last expositions we considered much as there was a chance of safety they wanted him to watch his back but let us remember the words of Paul and what he had said of himself consider in Philippians 1 Philippians chapter 1 and listen to his words when actually was showing that there was nothing that would deter him from accomplishing what actually was before him. It says in 120 that uh, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not I will not be at all ashamed but that with, with full courage now as always Christ, Christ will be honored in my body whether by life or by death how can you hinder such a man how can you dissuade such a man the thing is looking on to independent of all the sufferings the main thing of him is to see how he could further the gospel of Christ and honor him in his body in verses 21 of Philippians it says for to me but and to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ. For that is far better. But to remain 
remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. That is the Apostle Paul. Very committed and he sold out to the mission that was before him. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 going downwards yeah. says this in Ephesians 6 praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end keep alert with all perseverance making supplication for all saints 19 and as for me that words may be given to me that words may be given to me why is this guy saying what that we say in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel now what is the big thing for us to learn out of this if the Lord permitted you to know some of the dangers that you did encounter. But he has called you to do a particular thing. What would you decide to do? To succumb to the dangers you're seeing or you choosing to continue to remain steady fast in accomplishing the assignment that you have to, have to accomplish. So what you learn of the apostle there were many highlighters, many indicators of the difficulties, of the dangers, but that in all could not actually stop him from accomplishing that which was before him. The same is true for us, my dear ones. If God ever helped you and helped you to, to see some of the things that you'd have to go through accomplish what he has called you to do the best thing to do is to remain loyal unto him regardless of the cost that you have to pay and it's a thing we are seeing that yes dangers are there there are very many dangers but remember he has the relief fund which has to be taken to Jerusalem. He sees an opportunity in Jerusalem at Pentecost to share the gospel with many. And now they are saying to him, do not go. But now duty was more louder than all the warnings. That's why your verses 5 says the way it says that when our days there were ended, meaning much as they tried to warn him their days there had ended of communing together breaking the bread together singing the hymns together learning the word together Paul was very determined that says that days were ended because he was not to stay there he had a journey to make and the Bible adds him to say we departed and we went on our journey indicating that also the Tyranian disciples they respected his decision they didn't force him in abandoning that which he was called to do and the Bible says that uh, we went on our journey and they all with wives and children the difference with this he was actually meeting with all disciples including men and women and children at Miletus, Imanita, he only met men and it's only men that accompanied him to the ship but now the tears here were mixed with those of women and children but the Bible says they all, they all with wives and children 
accompanied us until we were outside the city kneeling down on the beach you can imagine this there is none of us that should ever excuse ourselves that I was caught in a situation where I cannot pray even at the beach when the waves were rolling they actually prayed and why why was that a possibility? Our God cannot be limited. Look at the book of John. Chapter 4. And listen to what he speaks of himself. Beginning, beginning with verses 23. He says this. But the hour is coming. And now is here. When the true worshippers will worship the, fa- the Father in spirit and truth for the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit. And those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. No situation where you can say this place was very squeezed. This place was not convenient. The Bible says that at the beach they went on their knees. So one cannot rest pray. Unless one just decides and says, I'm not going to pray. We are called to pray at all times. And uh, we imagine Paul and the rest of these people that were accompanying him all on their knees on the, uh, at the beach. They were praying. The fact that our God is a spirit, one can always pray. The main thing that I want you, my dear ones, to get whether in prison or outside prison in abundance or in scarcity one can always pray verse 6 the Bible says and said farewell to one another and went on board and they returned home now this is also included for a reason of course we know people are accompanying another individual who is going somewhere and he found them in a particular place they are known to stay where he is actually boarding from but this is to show you that despite of the dangers they are seen and they are shared with Paul Paul did not go back at home with them you get what I'm saying he didn't return back like someone reaching where you're supposed to board from. And you say, I change my mind. Paul never changed his mind. Him and they that were his travel companions. They went on and they that they were fellowshipping with for seven days. They also returned to their homes. Look at seven. When we had finished the voyage, from Tyra. We arrived at Potelemis. It's also a very good name that you can actually give to an individual. <laughs> it says that the moment they got there, it was a different story. They greeted the brothers and stayed with them for one day. And wherever this gentleman would stop, a sovereign purpose was there. Because my dear ones, you imagine this. The first ten chapters, all actually being dominated by Paul. When I mean Peter. But now, we saw when, where the change came in. That when chapter nine actually began to point on to an individual known as Saul. From chapter eleven, up to where we are. We see the dominance of Paul and God had a reason as to why he gave him such actually an outstanding ministry for this purpose but look at verses 8 and uh, here is where I need us to pay the utmost of attention because there are a number of things there that I want to construct and disconstruct and uh, the, the 
this will also help us for the next week is exposition. The first thing that we see in verses 8. On the first look at that. On the next day. We departed and came to Caesarea. And the Bible has to say, and entered the house of Philip, the evangelist, who was one of the seven, and stayed with him. Now, the thing about this, there are several things there that we can consider. That careful observation brings in a place. That is not necessary. Caesarea is one of those outstanding places in the Bible. We remember, this is the first place where the gospel was first preached to the Gentiles. As first chapter 10. You remember the house of Cornelius? Cornelius was at Caesarea. So it was the first first place in the book of Acts where the gospel was ever actually first preached to those that are known as the Gentiles. It's a key place in the exposition that we are doing. And then another thing we know so very much well the reason as to why Philip was was now living at Caesarea. Because the last ministry he did, you remember very much well. After meeting with the Ethiopian eunuch, the spirit led him to Azotas. And then from Azotas, he connected into Caesarea. And so he was now abiding here. The second thing is that this wasn't Paul's first time to be in Caesarea. He was in this place before. Acts chapter 9 verse 30 is very clear. Let us look there. And see. That uh, the time when he was called to ministry. He, was, he came to this place also. Acts 9.30. It says and when the brothers. Had learned this. They brought him. Him. They brought him. And uh, wh- whom did they bring? They brought Paul. They brought him down to Caesarea. And he sent him off to Tarsus. Acts chapter 18. We also remember that he also to Caesarea another time. Chapter 18. Let us consider verses 22. 18 22. Says, and when he had landed at Caesarea, he went up and greeted the church and went down to Antioch. So, meaning, as we are in chapter 21, this was indeed Paul's third term in Caesarea. They are meeting with Philip after 25 years, according to the historians. 25 years we remember that behind them the thing that Philip knew Paul for was the persecution that he started in Jerusalem. So they meet after 25 years. Now the character here that is known as Philip let us actually refresh our minds. Chapter 6 verses 5. The Bible says of this of him as we covered in other expositions. It and what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit and Philip and then many others. And the reason for these guys they chose them to take care of the 
poor Christians in the church that was being established at Jerusalem. So these were actually the deacons responsible actually for caring for all the poor Christians and the church which was at Jerusalem. However, with, with time, God in one or the other entrusted this man with another office. As we all know from Acts chapter 8, this was the first man to take the message to Samaria. The Bible is very clear in Acts chapter 8 verses 4. Now when those who are scattered went out, about preaching the word, Philip went down to the city of Samaria. So we can in one or the other say that God gave him a promotion from being actually a deacon also to an office of him being an evangelist. Now when we speak of an evangelist we are talking of an individual that carries out what we call the glad tidings. Commonly known as the good news. Many today call themselves evangelists. But they know nothing about the gospel. They do not preach the biblical gospel. They preach what we call the social gospel. Come to Jesus. He will heal you of your sickness. Come to Jesus. He will make you rich. And those are individuals that are very proud in big congregation when they ask of them to mention their names. They say this is evangelist so and so. But you ask them, do you know what the gospel is? They know nothing about the gospel. They love the title. But they do not read more to know what the title is all about. The thing is, we shouldn't be such individuals. They call you a teacher, but you teach of falsehood. They call you a doctor in something, but you're a doctor of false teaching. But by the time the Bible says, Philip the evangelist, the man in you what it meant for one to be an evangelist. He could present the sins of men and show them that they are sinners in the hand of an angry God. And then he would give them the gospel by showing them what Jesus did for all sinners. He would first show them their depravity and then he would give them the good news. That is who actually an evangelist is. You first corner people around. Show them their sin. Let them hate themselves. Let them sorrow over their sins. And then they say, what must I do? I have known I am going to perish if I do not turn away. But sir, what must I do to be saved? Then you give them the good news. That's the thing that we are not hearing on many crusades. They promise Jesus that he's sick and sensitive in nature. Oh, he loves you. And Mary, he cannot live without you. He's seeking for you. He wants to be with you. Don't you get it? That is a sissified Jesus. That's a sorry Jesus. We don't need such a Jesus. We want a Jesus that is self-existent, self-glorifying. We don't want this one who is a baby seeking for a person to be with. We need to tell people if you don't repent, you perish. Those are the words of Jesus. Perish or repent. 
That's my God. That's a winner. That's a warrior. You should preach to people. Don't tell in them. You know he wants you so much. No, he doesn't want you. He's going to break you. He's going to kill you. If you remain in your sins. Now the term evangelist. Is not only mentioned here. It was first mentioned in Ephesians. Chapter 4. Where we look at the fivefold ministry. And then second Timothy chapter 4 verses 5. Where Timothy was told. To fulfill his work of an evangelist. Now that is Philip for you. The other thing that we do have. That we need to understand. Could be that this gentleman had a house that was big enough to actually accommodate all these guys. Well, I show you on a did Marao Guao Johnny Wang. They were not living in Kafunda. You know, pay to be my Armo Marata. Remember, Paul wasn't talking alone. Uh, we put Paul pretty lucky. He had several individuals. I'm going to get down with Paul. Now, why we know that Philippi's house was big enough to accommodate all these big guys? Philip did to around and do you? He had the four unmarried daughters. I don't take a year and when no food pay in your way. Where do you put them in Kafunda? In Kerguine or Jungle in look at your verses nine. Verses nine says, I'm going to watch it. The Bible says, I'll watch it before nine. Ah, uh, whom we stayed with. Name my one will be okay. First Peter 4 9. Look at it. Everyone of you. Much as you might be staying in Kafunda. First Peter 4 9 says that you should do this. You don't have to say. Man, you understand my condition. No, 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 no. You argue with the verses. It says showing hospitality to one another without grumbling. God knows that sometimes we might grumble. Say, man, my situation is not very good. I'm in Kafunda. You, you put your legs on top of one another. But be hospitable to people. Especially those that are sharing in the gospel. Don't just be hospitable to people who are just useless. Especially people you know. These are ministers. They are around this place. They don't know any person here. But it's me they know. Then you, you bring them in your kafunda. And have a communion the entire night. You get what I'm saying? Without what? Grumbling. Until we don't have enough food. No, so we don't have enough plates. Ah, okay, okay. The spoons okay, are not okay. enough. That's the grumbling. Who doesn't want it? You use what is there. But be hospitable. So verse 9 comes into say. He had four. There's a version which says. Four virgins. Now that again should communicate to us. That virginity in itself. Is not something that is awkward. Or something that is weird. That the Bible does not honor. I say this to me. I was in it, but that the man had done his work. He had raised up daughters very well. Indeed, this man had to be in ministry. Because he managed this house very well. His daughters had not wasted themselves. They were not actually the top store in the village there. She slept with the other one. She also slept with the other one. She also slept with the other person. No, this one, not Philippi's daughter. An example to all of us that it starts with us managing our homes well. Four daughters are not easy to raise. All of them being virgins to the glory of God. And then if we use the language of the ESV, which says that they were unmarried. We don't know whether the command was coming from their father. Because 1 Corinthians 7 37 also mentioned something. Their fathers who might want to protect their virgin daughters. And they may not be willing to give them for marriage. In consent with all with our daughters. And another thing. 
We don't know whether it was a voluntary actually a decision by their daughters. But they never wanted to be married. But the thing we see is this. What all fathers have to do. When your daughters are not married. At least look out for them. Take care of them. They need to have a man. That watches over them. You don't abandon them. Now the other thing about these daughters. The Bible says they prophesied. Now the thing about this. Has led to a number of these funny stories here. Women ministers and all of that. But it has to be made very clear. Philippi's daughters. They also prophesied. Of the dangers. And the difficulties. That were waiting for Paul. As others had already done. They were not saying anything new. They were only also making what? A concretization. Of what the Tyrrhenian disciples had said. From prophets in the Bible. They do not say something new. That is separate. From that which was already revealed. And so we see these daughters. They were not saying anything new. They simply. Forward told. Of the same dangers. That others had also said. However this was also part of the fulfillment. Of what we see in Joel chapter, chapter 2. Let us look there. Let us look there. Because it's one of the verses that are being used. But this was part of that fulfillment that does not need to be actually replayed again. And uh, as we see in other scriptures, you realize that uh, all that was being uh, said of Prophet Joel, part of it was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost, and part of it is being fulfilled here by the daughters of Philip. And the greater part of it will be fulfilled in the time of the tribulation. But just consider in verses 28, this is what you get. It says in Joel chapter 2, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. This was fulfilled. Acts chapter too. Uh, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Which you have seen also the daughters here prophesy. Your old men shall dream of dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Even the male and the, uh, and the female servant. In those days I will pour out my spirit. So this thing here of the daughters. Being fulfilled here by the daughters of Philip. And the other thing I want to just add on this. These daughters. They simply foretold. They never explained their, their, their prophecy. For the Bible does not command or allow women to teach publicly. So the best they did was to simply forward tell without explaining any words. That's the Bible. Why do we say what we say? It's because of the lovely First Timothy. Lovely when you believe this truth. Not lovely when you don't believe this truth. First Timothy 2. 11. Remember the house of Philip. Eh? There is a man there who writes first Timothy you get what I'm saying his name is known as who he's known as Paul and now here 
Acts is written after some good years. When Paul had written Corinthians long time ago, so these daughters here who do not do anything against that wish, the Holy Spirit had inspired Paul to write in that letter. You follow what I'm saying? So this is why you see in verses 11 it says, Let a woman quietly. I mean learn quietly with all submissiveness I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man now this time around it wasn't just a man it wasn't just their father they were also actually Paul and his travel companions and what happens rather she is to remain quiet for Adam was formed first and then Eve and Adam was not deceived but the woman was deceived because of a, and became a transgressor as if that is not enough the oldest of the oldest the one that was written before Timothy says the same thing in 1 Corinthians 14 the verse 34 so it says I don't know if I've ever given you the chronicle or the order of these books here. but what you should know is that uh, with one of the oldest letters of Paul is actually Galatians first and second Thessalonians then followed by these two letters of the Corinthians. So you should understand that simple actually observation shows that uh, everything that you see him writing in Timothy one big thing that you should never miss was already made very clear in Corinthians a long time ago. Because Timothy 1 and 2 and Titus were the last letters he wrote before he died. And so look at 34. And then the women should keep silent in the churches. People normally want to limit this message to the Corinthians. But what do you do with a plural there? It says women should keep silent in the churches. Not only, not only at the church or at Corinth, but in all churches. They are not supposed to teach. I was to say, for they are not permitted to speak the Greek word is laleo which means actually a long discourse you're not allowed to do that and it doesn't to say why but should be in submission as the Lord also does what? Now some people thought in one or the other I think by the time when Paul was writing this that Paul was just forming something of his own he reminds them that even the law is in agreement with this. And so that's one thing that we know of our Philippi's daughters. That was the last prophesy. You don't get them anywhere else prophesying. Also told of the same dangers that Paul was to encounter. And they are told to be submissive as a sign of obedience. However, it should also be understood that the gift is so for prophecy was never shut out to the women before actually the canon was made complete. That's why in the Old Testament we have people like Deborah in the book of Judges chapter 4 verses 14 she was given some prophecies and again you see Second Kings chapter 22 prophetess Howda was also doing the same and then again you see Elizabeth also and she was actually 
inspired to write some good hymns. The mother of our Lord also was inspired to write some good hymns. In Luke actually chapter 1. Uh, at verses 40, 40, 46. And now we have also seen the, the daughters of Philip here. So before the canon was complete, the gift of prophecy was not shut out to women. The spirit would actually use whoever, whoever he wanted to use. And so here, another thing I, I do not want to miss is just to go back onto verses 8 again before we actually wind up this. It is believed by many historians that since the start of the church uh, in Jerusalem started without the presence of Dr. Luke. This meeting here in the house of Philip was very important to the doctor but doctor who is also a historian here that it is believed Philip narrated unto the doctor a number of things that he had to write down concerning the first years when Paul was not on scene speaking of the persecution the establishment of the church there and that's why we believe that the account of Luke is perfect yes he wrote it under the apostolic authority of Paul and he had good actually uh, statements from those that were also there like Philip himself. So this meeting here at Caesarea was indeed actually organized and ordained by God so that they could meet and we believe several things happened. They were also actually reminding of Paul how he worked on them seriously. And he was also like asking them how was it man? How did you guys escape and all that? So we believe indeed these guys had a very good time together. Imagine 25 years. He had never met Paul. But he was part of those that Paul pushed out of Jerusalem. We believe that this was indeed a very outstanding time when these guys met. And this was simply to prepare Paul for so many other things that were yet to happen to him. And so, my dear ones, the thing we learn about the apostle, yes, he had several actually prophecies that were reflecting before him the dangers that were waiting for him. But duty was more louder than all the warnings. And the hours to learn is this. Even us, ever get to see what awaits of us and we are called to do a particular thing so be it we should trust God and do the right thing the same thing we do with this preaching here it causes a lot of isolation not speaking the same languages that other ministers are speaking you'll be isolated and several things will be said about you but what are you to do? Don't have to mind them. Do what you know the Lord says has to be done. Do the right thing. Independent of the dangers and several things that you might encounter. So that's the main thing. For me that I see here. With the first nine verses. And many other things. To do with how or even these daughters were not saying anything new. But that which was already revealed. So let us give thanks to our Lord for what He has enabled us to learn.